Mr. McCoy here with today's edition of Literacy Corner. It features comparing patterns of events and stories. It revolves around three folk tales, one from Hawaii, one from Alaska, and one from Korea. Here they come now. Up first, How Maui Snared the Sun, it's an Hawaiian folktale. Be listening for the beginning, middle, and end because you will be comparing this folktale with the next folktale. Maui was the son of Hainalai and Haina, and they dwelt at a place called Makilea above Kakaloa on West Maui. Now his mother Haina made kapas, and as she spread them out to dry, the days were so short that she was put to great trouble and labor in hanging them out and taking them in day after day until they were dry. Maui, seeing this, was filled with pity for her. The days were so short that no sooner had she got her kapas all spread out to dry than the sun went down and she had to take them in again. So he determined to make the sun go slower. He first went to Waloi in Hamakwa on East Maui to observe the motions of the sun. There he saw that it rose toward Hana. He then went on to Hakila and saw that the sun in its course came directly over that mountain. He then went home again and after a few days went to a place called Peliko on Wahi. He cut down all the coconut trees and gathered the fiber of the coconut husks in great quantity. This he manufactured into strong cord. One Mahom, seeing this, said tauntingly to him, You will never catch the sun. You are an idle nobody, Maui answered. When I conquer my enemy and my desire is attained, I will be your death. So he went up to Hakluya again, taking his cord with him. And when the sun rose above where he was stationed, he prepared a noose of the cord. Casting it, he took one of the sun's larger beams and broke it off. And thus he snared and broke off, one after another, all of the strong rays of the sun. Then shouted he exultingly, You are my captive, and now I will kill you for going so swiftly. And the sun said, Let me live, and you shall see me go more slowly hereafter. Behold, have you not broken off all my strong legs and left me only the weak ones? So the agreement was made, and Maui permitted the sun to pursue its course. And from that time on, it went more slowly. And that is the reason why the days are longer at one season of the year than at another. So what was the beginning, the middle, and the end of how Maui snared the sun? Share with your fellow listener. Up next, How Crow Brought Daylight. It's an Inuit folktale. Inuit people live in what is today Alaska. Be listening for the beginning, middle, and end, and be prepared to compare this folktale to the previous folktale, How Maui Snared the Sun. Long ago, when the world was young, the Inuit knew nothing about daylight. They lived and hunted under the stars of the northern darkness and thought nothing of it. Crow, however, had traveled far and wide and had seen daylight for himself. He told the Inuit about the light he saw at the horizon and how it made the earth glow with warmth and brilliance. The people began to think how wonderful it would be to have light. They could hunt more efficiently and gaze upon each other without need of a fire. The village elders begged Crow to find the daylight and bring it to them. Crow agreed to make the journey south, flying endless hours until he reached a village where the sky turned bright with colors, soft and wondrous. Crow saw a man who looked like the village chief and followed him home. Through an open window, Crow spied a ball glowing like a jewel resting in a corner. He knew the ball must be daylight. Waiting until the man went out again, Crow flew through the window, grabbed the ball, and flew away. Crow's journey back north was long and even more tiring because he had to hold the ball in his beak. By the time he reached the Inuit village, he was exhausted from his journey. Crow looked like a spark of light as he flew closer, flapping his wings as hard as he could, but Crow could no longer hold on to the ball. It fell to the ground and exploded into a brilliant light, chasing away the night. The sky became bright blue, 
The shadowed mountains took on color and form. As the people screamed in delight, Crow warned them that the daylight would not last forever. It must rest every six months to regain its strength, he explained. So from that day until this, the Inuit have lived half a year in darkness and the other half in light. And they always treat Crow kindly, for he was the one who first brought them daylight. So what is the beginning, middle, and end? And how does the beginning, middle, and end of this folktale compare to the previous folktale? Share with your fellow listener. Here comes the King's Fire Dogs. It's a Korean folktale. And as you immerse yourself in this folktale, be on the lookout for how the king attempts to steal the sun and the moon. Heaven contains just as many countries as the earth does. There is one called Land of Darkness where there is a king who keeps huge fierce dogs called fire dogs. This king is always trying to think of ways to bring more light to his country. One day he called the biggest and most ferocious of his fire dogs and told it to go and bring him the sun. Off loped the dog and tried to seize the sun in his jaws, but the sun was so hot that it burned the dog's mouth. He snapped at it again and again, but could not hold on. He had to go back to his master with his tail between his legs. The king summoned his next biggest dog. He sent it to steal the moon for him, thinking that the moon wouldn't be as hot as the sun. But the second dog fared no better than the first. The moon was so cold that when he tried to bite it, the moon froze the dog's tongue to his mouth and made his teeth sing with pain. Hard as he tried, he could not hang on to the moon and had to spit it out. He too slunk back to the king. Still, the king of darkness never gives up hope. Every now and then he sends one of his fire dogs to try to steal the sun or the moon. You can see the bite marks whenever there's an eclipse. So, how did the king attempt to steal the sun and the moon? Share with your fellow listener. This marks the end of today's Adventures in Literacy Corner. More adventures are coming in the next edition. They too will be equally incredible.